Hey guys, in this video, we're going to look at how to create this simple animated dash line in DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, have a look. To get started, let's go ahead and bring a Fusion Composition clip directly to the Fusion page. Here, we're going to bring in a background node first and connect it to Media Out 1. Then we're also going to bring in another background node and we're going to connect this new background node back to the other background node so that this new node is going to become the foreground. So let's go ahead and change this color to white. Then let's also bring in a rectangle masking node and we're going to connect our rectangle masking node to our new background node here. And this is what's going to eventually become our animated dash line. So to do that, let's go ahead and first of all, uncheck the solid box. Then we're also going to bring up the border width to whatever that we think is appropriate for our animation here. Now, in order to get the full dash line, we actually have to start with an individual dash line. So let's go ahead and bring down the length setting. As you guys can see, this is what's going to give us our individual dash line here. And we can also change the look of the dash line as well to something like flat. So let's do that. And now in order to animate this dash line, we are going to play with the position setting. So as you guys can see, when we start to bring the position from zero uh, to one, this is what's going to allow our dash line here to go a uh, full circle around the rectangle. And this position setting is exactly what we're going to be using to help us create our animation. So at frame zero, let's go ahead and keyframe the position setting and we're going to leave it at zero as well. Then let's come to the last frame. Let's keyframe position setting and we're going to change this to one. Now, if we go ahead and play our clip right now, you can see that our dash line is going full circle uh, around the rectangle. And if we take a closer look, the great thing about this uh, method is that when the line goes around the corner, it really conforms to the angle of the corner. So it's creating a very smooth, natural look. And this is exactly what we want for our effect. But we still have to figure out a way to fill the rectangle with dash lines. And in order to do that, we're going to take advantage of the duplicate node, which you can find under effect. And we're going to place it between background and merge one. Here, the first thing we're going to do is to determine the number of copies, and we're gonna go with 40 copies in this case. And now if we change the time offset setting, this, as you can see, is what's going to allow us to fill this entire shape with dash lines. However, the tricky thing is that if we manually change time offset, as you can see, it's a little bit uh, tricky to get all the lines evenly spaced out. So one simple solution for this is to right click time offset and then in the menu, let's go ahead and create an expression. And in the expression, we're going to write the total number of frames for our clip here, which is 119. And we're going to divide it by the number of copies that we have created above. So let's do that, link it. And now you guys can see all the dash lines are evenly spaced out uh, throughout this entire shape. And the best thing is that if we decide to change the number of copies to something that's like 30 or 20 or whatever, the time offset setting will change accordingly to ensure that at all times we have perfectly evenly spaced out dash lines. Now, another thing with a dash line here is that as we play our clip here and towards the end of it, all the lines, as you can see, will be disappearing and we will end up with only the original dash line. And this is not what we want. So. What we need to do is to go ahead and make a copy of our duplicate note here and then paste it. This will paste it right after. And then in the new duplicate note, we're going to change the sign for time offset to negative. So now as you guys can see that when we play our clip here towards the end of it, we will not be ending up with our original dash line. So we will have our full dash line throughout this entire video. All right, guys, we're almost there. Now, this may or may not happen to you, but one thing I noticed when I play this uh, clip uh, is that at a certain point in the animation, our lines are no longer evenly spaced out. One line in particular is becoming longer than the rest of it. So uh, this is something that we definitely want to stop from happening. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is to uh, come back to our rectangle node. 
Now, uh, let's go ahead and move the playhead to the very last frame in our clip here. And then we're going to keyframe the level setting and we're going to leave it at one. Then we're going to move one frame over, which is out of bound, so you cannot see anything, but we're going to keyframe the level parameter by bringing it all the way down to zero. So now if we come to our clip here and we can still see that extra long line there disrupting our animation. Uh, but if we come to our uh, second duplicate node and under subtractive and additive, if we start to bring this down, you guys can see that the line that's overlapping it is going to become more and more transparent. So if we start to bring this down to, let's say minus, um, I would say minus three, you guys can see that now this is, uh, if we play our clip here again, um, this is getting way much better. And uh, in order to be 100% sure, let's just bring this down a little bit more. Uh, now we have uh, perfectly evenly spaced out that dash lines throughout our entire video. So now let's take it back to the edit page, let the effect render. And as you guys can see, we have now created our animated dash line. And once again, the best thing about this method is that the lines really hug the corners, creating a very smooth, natural look. However, the problem is that our animation is way too fast at this point. So let's go ahead and uh, look at how to create a slower version of this now that we have the basics of the workflow built out. Okay, let's take it back to the Fusion page and first of all, get rid of the duplicate nodes. Now, if you guys can remember, when we play our individual dash line here, it's going to go around the rectangle. And obviously, this is way too fast. So instead of it stopping at one, we can have it stop at a quarter of the way. And if you want even slower pace, you can go with a much smaller increment. But for now, we're going to go with a quarter of the way. So if we play our clip uh, right now, you guys can see that this is way much slower compared to what we had before. And now all we need to do is to create three more copies of this, but position at different point in the rectangle in order to complete the cycle. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a copy of it and paste it. And in this new rectangle, we're going to uh, have the position start at one quarter and then have it end at two quarters, which is the halfway point. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to make a copy of this node and then paste it again. And then we're going to have this new node start at two quarters and then end at three quarters of the way. So let's do that. And then once that is done, let's make a copy of this again and then paste it. And now we're gonna have this new one start at three quarters and then end at a four quarters, which is one. So now you guys will see that we have now four lines going at the same pace around the rectangle at all time. And all we need to do at this point is to create duplicates in order to complete our animation. All right, so let's bring our duplicate node. And once again, we're going to determine the number of copies first. I think in this case, eight is going to be sufficient. Then we're going to go ahead and create an expression for the time offset setting. Once again, the same thing as what we did earlier. And then uh, once that is done, let's go ahead and make a copy of the duplicate node, then paste it. And then in the time offset setting, we're going to change the sign to negative. Now let's go ahead and take our animation back to the edit page, let it render. So now, as you guys can see, we have created our animated dash line, which is way much slower compared to before, uh, but it still looks perfect. It looks very clean. And a lot of that is because of the fact that our lines here really can adapt to the angles of the shape. So uh, yeah, I hope this tutorial helps guys. Hope you learned something and uh, I will see you next time.